Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Giving you a few moments to come in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What an awesome day. What an awesome day it is. We sing praises to your name, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy, Lord. How many know he's worthy on today? Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We lift up your holy name, God. You amazing God, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody, give him a hallelujah praise on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah means to give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you have just tuned in to recipes. With a message, you are not confused there. I am a prayer warrior, a Lord lifter, a Jesus freak, whatever you want to call me. Hallelujah. But you have tuned in to Recipes with a Message. I am your host, Galanda Gore, and I am here to share an awesome recipe with you today. And more than that, I'm here to share an awesome word with you today. A life-changing word. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give God glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Lift up his name on today. He is so worthy to be praised. Y'all, I feel something brewing in my belly. Hallelujah. And it ain't hunger pains. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of the living God brewing in my belly. And it ain't hunger pains. I'm so excited about God. Hallelujah. I woke up excited about him. I laid down excited about him because he's good like that. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's good like that. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy for us to lift him up. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jackie Leon. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. Teresa Ramsey. If I miss your name, y'all know I can't see. I'm not intending not to speak to you. I love everybody. And I'm so glad y'all are tuning in today. Let me put these glasses on so I can see what's going on here. Oh, yeah. Hello, Miss Merle. Blessings to you. Debbie Duncan's blessings to you. Y'all come on in. Come on in. I'm excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all, I got a praise in my belly. Who has said he's such a good, good father? Hallelujah. I just woke up with a praise in my belly. I don't have a million dollars yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All my things are not taken care of yet. Hallelujah. But I got a praise in my belly because he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Erica, come on in. Blessings, you're welcome. Let me know where you're coming in from. If you're new to the broadcast today, this is Recipes with a Message. This is where I give you a recipe and give you a good word that will help encourage your week, your day, your life. Change you. It will change you, y'all. This is the same method that changed me and God Caused me to experience it. Put it in me and then caused me to screw it back out on y'all. Hallelujah. The goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before I get crunk and we turn this into a praise break, I'm going to try my best to uh, give you this recipe. Because y'all, I promise you, when I feel it, I feel it. Hallelujah. And the anointing of the Lord is resting in my house right now. And you know what I want? I want the anointing that's resting in my house to go to your house, in your car, on your job. And you be able to look at that co-worker that's hating on you with a smile. Hallelujah. Because the word has come to your job. Hallelujah. The anointing is resting on your shoulder. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace is in at the workplace. Hallelujah. Who can say, glory, hallelujah, I feel the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, listen, what I'm going to make for y'all today is some red potatoes, some garlic roasted potatoes, hey, hallelujah, go on, get your steak out the freezer, 
Go and get your chicken out or whatever you gonna prepare. Go and get that out the freezer while I wash off these potatoes. I have cut these little round potatoes into sections. They come like this right here. And I have cut them in half like this. And um, I'm making garlic roasted potatoes. Yeah, somebody say yes. So now that they are clean and washed for the second time, because I'm a cleanie, uh, we're going to get ready to uh, garnish them and get them ready to go in the oven. How about that, you guys? So I can get into this word that's brewing in my belly. Hallelujah. That I'm so excited about. Listen, I got my little crisper here. If you have one, I got my little copper crisp, crisper. I like my red skins on my potatoes crispy and delicious. So I got my crisper right out there. And I'm going to wash my hands again and get on to seasoning them and garnishing them so they can go in the oven, y'all, and come out and go with this ribeye steak that I'm going to cook today. I will garnish these bad boys, these potatoes, when I get them out of the oven and get ready to eat them this evening. I'm going to put some bacon, a uh, real bacon bits on mine and some sour cream and cheddar cheese on mine. And you can do them plain however you want to do them. But they will be well seasoned and ready to eat the minute you take them out the oven. Okay, so I put my potatoes, my red potatoes, I leave the skin on and I put them this side up where I've cut it. I make sure I put them in my little pan that side up, most of, best as possible. And then what I do is I take me some extra virgin olive oil and I sprinkle just a dab all over them. Just a dab of oil all over me over them. Because I take the top off, y'all. I thought I had the top still off. I sprinkle my olive oil on there. I wonder why it wasn't coming out. Dang. I am doing show, Alana. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now, you sprinkle the olive oil on the top. And then what I do is I have some garlic and parsley. I do about a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of garlic and parsley. I sprinkle that over the top of them real good and make sure they're really good and seasoned. And it cleaves to that olive oil that I've already put on my potatoes. It just kind of cleaves to them. You don't want to overpower your, your potatoes with a lot of seasoning. You don't want to overpower them because how many know you love the taste of a versatile good potato? So I do about a teaspoon of that seasoning. And I do a little black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I hadn't measured it out yet because you know what? I'm not really a measurer. I know this stuff by heart. So uh, I sprinkle a little bit on that, that black pepper on there. And then I take and put some... Um, Slap your mama seasoning. Here it is, some slap your mama seasoning. I take and I sprinkle a little bit of that on there just for the little spice, just a little spice. Not much, you don't want to do too much. You don't want it too spicy because we're doing the garlic roasted potatoes. And so then I just take and just put me a little free sprinkle of garlic, the, the minced garlic just so I can get a little taste in every bite. And I just kind of lay it on top of my potatoes individually. And you can also do this, you guys, uh, if you do it in foil. You can put all these potatoes inside of some foil, aluminum foil, and roll it up, close it tightly, and put it in the oven and let it bake too. And it comes out good, they're really good. Put just a tad bit of water and a little butter in there. And they come out really good too. But I'm doing these more healthier. I'm doing it with some olive oil. And I want my skin to be crisp. I want my skin to be crisp. So uh, then I take and I do something. I do some Parmesan cheese grating. And I sprinkle my Parmesan cheese over the top of them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. A little Parmesan cheese on top. And they are well seasoned and ready to go in the oven. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. And we put these in the oven on this little copper crisper. Look here. Put them in the oven and let them bake. About 20 minutes on 350. For about 20 minutes on speed 350. 
I mean, on temperature 350. I'm talking about a mix and now speed. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, that is in the oven. If you're just tuning in, we just made garlic roasted potatoes. And uh, again, you can put them in aluminum foil, season them the exact same way, roll it up, leave a little crack in the middle of that foil, put them in the oven and let them just roast for you about, a, about 20, 30 minutes or so according to how many potatoes you got in there. I just got a few because I'm individually eating today. And so I got me a ribeye steak ready to put on my grill to eat with them potatoes. And y'all, I'm a child out. It's going to be good, good, good. How about that? Crispy skin, let's go. Yeah, it's going to have crispy skin, Sylvia. Okay, y'all, I want to get into a very, 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 very blessed word. Bless me so much this morning. I'm still riding on that high, that Holy Ghost high. Hallelujah. So I want to share with you, if you have your Bible, y'all know this show by now. I'm a word-carrying believer, and I want to give you the word this morning. And so I want to bless you today, and I'm going to do quite a bit of reading, but I'm going to try to make it short as possible. So let's get ready. Are you ready for the word? Send me lots of hearts and let me know you're ready. Send me some love. Send me lots of hearts and let me know you're ready so I can get into this word. Yeah, that crisper, Megan, yeah, that is a blessing. It's good with fries, chicken strips, or whatever. You put it on there, and it's going to make yourself crispy without grease, without oil. And so I sprinkled a little olive oil on there for the taste, but you don't even need that. It makes your stuff crispy without the oil. Oh, I see them hearts coming up. Y'all ready for the word? Hallelujah. Y'all ready for this word? Let me just take a moment to just give him praise. Can y'all mind? Hallelujah. He's a good father. Father God, I thank you for the word, God. I thank you, dear Lord, for the readers of the word, Lord Jesus, that are reading with me right now, Lord. I thank you for the hearers of the word. And most of all, God, I thank you for the doers of the word, Lord Jesus. Bless us, oh God. Cause this word to land on good ground and touch the heart of your people all over the world. All over the world, Lord. Move this word all over the world. Circulate it to your people. Lord, only you can do it. Only you can do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 37. We're going to start at the third verse. And I'm going to read and then I'm going to talk to you guys. How about that? Y'all pray for the sin of hearts while I'm reading. I'm not a very good reader. But how many know you do what you do when God tell you to do what to do? <laughs> now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. Uh-huh. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. You can't tell everybody your dream. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, here, I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed. He said, I'm going to tell you my dream. <laughs> For behold, we were binding sheaves, and in the field, and lo, my sheave arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obstinate to my sheaves. And his brother said to him, shall thou indeed reign over us? People don't like that. Hallelujah. Long you, you can do good, but don't do better than them. Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more. That dream was stirring up something. Hallelujah. Y'all got to beware of dream killers. They are out there. There are people out there that are jealous of your dream. Hallelujah. You don't tell people your plan until you have executed your plan. Hallelujah. Because there are a such, there is a such thing as a dream killer. Who am I talking to today? Hallelujah. And they hated him all the more for his dream and for his words. And his dream yet, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brother and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made offense to me. And he told it 
to his father and his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him and his brothers envied him. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. And his brothers envied him. And his father, but his father observed the saying. Listen, you got people that will envy you and hate you for your dream. And then you got those people that will watch. Hallelujah. That will just sit and observe. Hallelujah. They know something special about you, but they, they don't want to completely say you're not going to do it, but they just observe and watch. So here is his father says, and but his father observed him. Let's skip on over here to verse 20. If y'all want to read this, read this in its entirety. It's a really good chapter. Hallelujah. It's a real big blessing to you. Let's start. Let's get over here on to about the 18th verse. And when they saw him afar, here comes Joseph. They told him his dream and he's coming into the field. And the Bible says in chapter in verse 18, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. They made a plot against him to slay him. Ha he said it, old would say. And then, and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into the pit. And we will say some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dream. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Listen, be careful who you reveal your dreams to. Complete your mission. Complete your goal. Complete your dream before you go telling everybody. Because there are some people in this world that don't want to see you prosper. Like I said, they don't mind you prospering. As long as you don't prosper above them, that's when envy comes out. That's when jealousy comes out. Listen, I don't want to get you stuck right there, though. <laughs> I want you to see the big plan. Joseph went through the pit to the palace. He was lied on, sold into slavery, and he went through a lot of trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. The brother said, let's see what become of his dream. Hallelujah. When we kill him, <laughs> let's just see what happens to his dream. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what happened to his dream. Whew. They came true. His dreams came true. They did bow before him. God did raise him up. God did put him in a position of authority. Oh, they see it. Here's the deal, y'all. We have to focus not on the dream killers. We have to focus on the ultimate dreamer. You see, God is the ultimate dreamer. When God gives you a dream, it comes from his mind. Hallelujah. So he is the ultimate dreamer. Hallelujah. He is the dreamer with all authority to cause what he put in you to come to pass. So Joseph didn't get stuck on the review mirror looking back at what they had done to him. Joseph kept his focus in front of him in spite of all that was going on in spite of all the lies possible wives lied on him in spite of all that Joseph kept the vision in mind the dream and he kept on dreaming and he kept on dreaming and his dreams opened doors for him If you look in the 
rearview mirror, you can't dream, y'all. But if you look at the big plan of God, if you look at the magnitude of what God is doing when they mistreat you, see, when they mistreat you, some people got to come back and apologize to you. Some people is running scared for the things they did to you. But at the end of your story, your dream's going to come true, and there's going to be some people that's going to come and say to you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't believe in your dream. I'm sorry I couldn't see what you saw because of jealousy and envy. Hallelujah. You just got to keep dreaming. Who said that right there? Megan. Yes, you just got to keep dreaming. Put your focus on God, the ultimate dreamer, the one who gives dreams. Hallelujah. The one who causes you to succeed. Hallelujah. The one that causes you to prosper. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, y'all. If I had to listen to people about what I know God put in me, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you now with three businesses in my hands. If I had to listen to the negativity that came out of people's mouth when they say, you don't even have a diploma. You don't even have a high school education. How could you think you go tutor and help mentor men coming out of prison. I said, but I got God and I got a dream. He gave me a dream. He gave me a dream, y'all. Hallelujah. That's all I need. The dreamer, the ultimate dreamer gave me a dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People would do things to you and they would hate you. You just got to love them anyway. And how you love them anyway, you got to focus on your future. You got to focus on what's in front of you. If you get stuck worrying about how they hurt you, how he left you, left you with nothing, how he left you with them three kids to reign, if you get stuck there, you won't fulfill your dream. But if you put your focus on the ultimate plan of God, he says, I know the plans I have for you. They are good and not evil. They are to give you an expected end. Who has said they are to cause your dreams to come true? Hallelujah. If you put your focus right there and stay there, you'll find yourself don't even remember who they are. You know why you won't remember who they are? Because at the end of your story, You won't even be the same. You won't look the same. You won't act the same. You won't talk the same. You won't hate or anything. You will be at perfect peace because you know in the big grand scheme of God, he had a plan in mind. This is why I don't hate my enemies and the people that came against my dream. Because the big picture is for me to stand right here in front of you and minister this gospel. They might have meant it for evil, but God meant it to save many lives. Ain't that what Joseph told them? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. That many, many nations, many people will be saved. Oh, hey, see it in the air. See it in the old court and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then, be encouraged. Don't worry about the hater. Don't worry about the naysayer. Don't worry about the people that's coming against you. There are people in this comment section talking right now. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something, baby. Those that are negative in this comment section, you can't kill a dreamer. You can't kill this dreamer. You can't kill this dream. Hallelujah. God appointed me, anointed me for such a time as this to reach his people. If you are blessed by the message, let me know. If you are blessed by the message, let me know. 
Hallelujah. In the end, a dream gives you courage. The dream in the inside of you will give you courage to step in places that you would never step in. That's why they couldn't tell me because I'm a ninth grade dropout. I can't own my own business. I had a dream. That's why they couldn't tell me I couldn't start my own businesses. Because I had a dream. The dream supersedes doubt. Dreams supersedes doubt. Dreams overrides negativity. Do you have a dream today? Pursue your dream, woman of God. Pursue, pursue your dream, man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Hallelujah. I hope I bless you all today. Hallelujah. Don't get stopped where the dream killer left off. Get going. Get going on what the dreamer, the ultimate dreamer, gave you to dream. Be activated by the power of God. If you're under the sound of my voice right now, there is an anointing for activation. Woo, just put it in there. Somebody said, she has just activated me through the word of God. You have just been activated. So where the enemy tried to deactivate you, you have just became activated in your dream, in your purpose, in your business, in whatever it is that God gave you to dream about. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of God. Don't ever forget it. Hallelujah. A lady wrote something on my post and she asked me how could she give into my ministry. And I'm going to share it with y'all, not because I need or want anything from you, but I once sold a seed into somebody and I had begun to, to question or to ask God, why would I have to give my last to this person? And the Lord says, they don't need it. You do. And I'm going to say the same thing back at you. I may not have need of what you want to sow. But you may have a need. And if you want to sow into this anointing, you can. Just cash out dollar sign Galanda Gore. If you don't, you're going to still see me in a couple of days ministering the gospel. You're going to still, still see me giving you the word of God because my ministry, my love for people and what I do is not predicated on the dollar bill. I was delivered from that 20 some years ago. If I ever had an issue, I don't know, but I want to encourage you to pursue your dreams. Miss Clark says she has just been activated. <laughs> I love you, Miss Clark. You most definitely have. Hallelujah. No longer pay attention to the dream killer. Put your focus on the dream giver. Your dream giver is God. He is the ultimate one that downloads a dream into your spirit. You get busy doing your dream. You get busy doing you. You get busy focusing in front of you. Don't look back in the rearview mirror anymore at the naysayers, the complainers, the ones that don't support, the ones that don't help, but they always talk. Y'all ever notice the one that's always belittling and putting people down, talking about people, and the one ain't doing nothing? Successful people, busy people, people that's going somewhere don't have time to stop and focus on everybody's business and talk about people. Remember that. Remember that. 
Hallelujah. We don't have time for it. Somebody said, we don't have time for that. Hallelujah. We got a dream to pursue. Hallelujah. So, as I shut my Bible this, this afternoon, the brother said, let's see what becomes of the dreamer once we kill him. The dreamer survived. The dreamer survived it because the hand of God was with him. The plan of God was with him and it came to pass. Much love. Have a blessed day. I will post a picture of my garlic roasted potatoes along with the recipe. If you'd like to make them tonight for someone special or yourself or you're special, get you some flowers, set you some candles on the table to have you a good dinner because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my flowers, my drink, my roasted potatoes, my ribeye steak, and my garlic toast and my salad, and I'm going to get down tonight, y'all. Much love.